The master boot record is a 512 byte block of information which holds code for loading an operating system into a computer's RAM, as well as details about a hard disk's partition scheme. In legacy hard disk media, as well as in many current disks, the master boot record is the default partition scheme. The master boot record is being replaced with another partition scheme which is known as the GUI ID partition table. Under the default configuration of the master boot record, it will only accommodate a hard disk with space up to 2 terabytes in size. This is, however, based on the sector size of the disk. If the sector size is set to the default of 512 bytes, then the master boot record will manage up to 2 terabytes. If the size of the sector is manipulated, however, the master boot record can be made to work with larger sizes. Here's an example. I have a Western Digital desktop hard drive which is 3 terabytes in size. If you examine the partition table of the disk's master boot record, you'll notice that the sector size has been set to 4096 bytes instead of the previous industry standard of 512 bytes. This adjusted sector size will now allow for a maximum addressable size of 16 terabytes instead of 2. In short, by increasing a disk sector size 8 times, we have increased the size of manageable space from 2 terabytes to 16. This is one reason why you sometimes see increased default sector sizes in larger sized hard disk drives. The master boot record was introduced as a partition scheme around 1983. It has been the primary partition scheme until around the time of Windows Vista, when a new scheme called the GUI ID partition table became an alternate choice. The GUI ID partition table was designed to replace the legacy master boot record. Besides the earlier mentioned 2 terabyte limitation, Another reason for upgrading the partition scheme was because the master boot record only accommodates four primary partitions. The GUI ID partition table allows up to 128 partitions. Starting around the end of Windows 7's prominence, the GPT started to become a more prominent partition scheme. If I may use another example, I purchased the Toshiba laptop that I am currently using around a year and a half ago. It came with Windows 8 pre-installed on it. The 275 gigabyte hard disk drive that this laptop uses has a GUI ID partition table as its default partition scheme. You can count on pretty much any newly purchased computer having a GUI ID partition table as the default. However, if you are repartitioning and reformatting a disk, the master boot record is still one of the available alternate options on many disk administration tools. From the perspective of forensic examiners, there are still many legacy computers in circulation that use the master boot record as opposed to the GUI ID partition table, so knowing the MBR structure is still very important. The structural breakdown of the GUI ID partition table will be detailed in a separate video lecture. This presentation will focus on the forensic breakdown of the master boot record. This video will make use of the Active at Disk Editor application to demonstrate this analysis. Let's begin. The master boot record can be found in the very first sector of a hard disk drive, starting at offset 0. It is always 512 bytes in size exactly one sector if the disk is smaller in size and left with the industry legacy default. Just by looking at the master boot record using a disk editor, there are a number of ways you can identify it. First of all, if you look at the ASCII column, you'll notice about 300 bytes of indecipherable junk. At the bottom of this garbled ASCII junk is some legible clear text which reads, Invalid Partition Table. Error Loading Operating System, and Missing Operating System. Also at the very bottom of the master boot record, the last two bytes will always read 55AA. The first block of the master boot record, highlighted here in gray, is bootstrapping code. 
This is the initial bit of code that is executed to begin loading the primary operating system into RAM. This really has no forensic significance for the examiner, but it helps to understand what it is that you're looking at. The only other item of significance from this particular block are the last three bytes highlighted in gray. These are 2C, 4, 4, and 6, 3 in hex. The significance of these three bytes is that they represent an error code that is specific to English-speaking versions of Windows XP in 2000. The master boot record is a structure which holds data that is pertinent to the hard disk on which it resides. Most of the fields in this database table will not change. Some of the fields might change their values if there are many changes made to the disk. Other fields will remain null or empty unless there are other changes made to the disk, in which case they will become populated. As successive versions of Windows have been released, changes to the master boot record have taken place. These changes include what data is displayed in the field and how that data is displayed. Often, the changes have been very subtle. There are, however, enough changes between different versions of the master boot records to warrant reviewing the breakdown templates for each new version of Windows. For example, in one version of Windows, one of the listed fields might always be populated with zeros, whereas in a later version, there might actually be values there. The master boot record version that we're currently looking at was part of the Windows XP codebase. We can tell this due to the presence of the hex values 2C4463, which I mentioned a few moments ago. Perhaps this one little fragment of information might make the difference in a case at some point. What if, for example, an investigator handed you the forensic image of a hard disk that belonged to a suspect who was attempting to wipe all of its contents? What if this master boot record was one of the only pieces of information that could be retrieved? What distinguishing characteristics could you provide the investigator? You could tell him or her that the suspect's computer was either a Windows XP or 2000 machine, since that is what this template matches. Following the bootstrapping code block of the master boot record is the partition table. The partition table, as the name implies, is a database table which displays metadata about the physical layout of the hard disk. I'll start out by discussing the non-partition related information from the table first. Then I'll discuss the breakdown of the disk's partitions according to the metadata. The 4-byte sequence which immediately follows the bootstrapping code is the disk serial number. The disk serial number is a hexadecimal sequence that is used to uniquely identify a storage device. This number is provided by the manufacturer of the device. In this example, the disk serial number is 75830200 in hex. The two bytes which follow the disk serial number, 0000, are listed as reserved. When a field is listed as reserved, what this generally means is that it's not being used. A field that is designated as reserved will usually be filled with zeros. Sometimes a reserved field will have a value there, but it will only be used during specific occasions or under certain conditions. In this case, the field is populated with zeros. Following the reserved field is the beginning of the first and only partition of this hard drive. As I had mentioned earlier in this video, the master boot record supports four primary partitions. The hard disk in this example only has one partition. The metadata which describes the single partition runs for a duration of 16 bytes. Since there are no more partitions on this disk, the remainder of the sector is all zeros, until we get to our closing signature, 55AA. Before the 55AA, there is enough room for three more groups of 16-byte entries for partition metadata. Currently, these entries are left null. I will now go over the 16 bytes which make up the single partition entry. Byte 1 is a bootable flag, 
The name is self-explanatory. It means that you can boot to this particular partition. This field only becomes significant if there is more than one partition on the disk. If, for example, there are three partitions on this disk, the partition that you can boot to will be designated with a value of hexadecimal 80 in the partition table for this particular field. If there is only one partition on the disk, this value will by default be set to zero, since this is the bootable partition. Bytes 2, 3, and 4 refer to the start positions for head, sector, and cylinder. These fields refer to an archaic method of addressing from early hard drives. Back in the 80s, when personal computing was in its infancy, addressing on hard disks was done through a tri-number system known as cylinders, heads, and sectors. This was literally a physical addressing system which combined a particular cylinder, or a group of similar tracks throughout a stack of platters, with a particular head, which was the arm which read the data from a particular platter, and a third number which was a sector, a uniformly defined portion of space on one of the platters. The problem with this early addressing method was that it had a capacity limit of 504 megabytes. After some temporary intermediary solutions were used to account for this limitation, a new method of addressing called logical block addressing was implemented. Most hard disks released after 1996 use this newer logical block addressing scheme. As far as the master boot record was concerned, the cylinders, heads, and sectors addressing information was kept to accommodate legacy media. The fifth byte of the partition entry is the file system ID. This field identifies the type of file system that the operating system is using to manage files and folders on the disk. The example that you see here shows a hex value of 07. This means that the file system could be NTFS, HPFS, or XFAT. Another value that you might find in this field is 0B in hexadecimal, which is FAT32, the file system that was used with Windows 98. Bytes 6, 7, and 8 refer to the end head, end sector, and end cylinder. Like bytes 2 through 4, these fields are maintained to accommodate legacy media. Bytes 9 through 12 refer to the first sector of the volume. This value, when converted from hexadecimal to decimal using Little Endian, will give you the sector number where the partition begins. Remember, Little Endian is how the processor interprets the data from right to left. The value of the field in this case is 0, 0, 0, 001000000. 0, 0, 0, 0. If we read this value in Little Endian, it gives us 0100 0, 0, or 100. Hex 100 is 256 in decimal. This means that the partition begins at sector number 256. To calculate the exact byte offset in memory where sector 256 begins, we simply multiply 256 by the size of the sector, which in this case is 4096 bytes. If we multiply 4096 by 256, we get 1048576. This is the byte level offset where 256 begins. What you will find at this location is the volume boot record. That topic will be covered in a separate video. The reason why we multiplied the first sector value, which was 256, by a value of 4096 instead of 512 is because the hard disk is 3 terabytes in size. As I had mentioned previously, many larger size disk drives will have sector sizes that are larger than the industry standard of 512 bytes. Bytes 13 through 16 give us the size of the partition in sectors. To get this value, first we convert it using Little Endian from hex into decimal. Then we multiply that value by the size of a sector. If we read this value in Little Endian, we have 2B A9F300. 
If we convert this value to decimal, it gives us 732-558-080. If we multiply this by the size of a sector, which is 4,096 bytes, we get the following value in bytes. 3000557895680. This converts to 3 terabytes. This concludes the metadata for this partition. In the next video lecture, we will go over the forensic breakdown of the volume boot record.